There are some really amazing ventures here. Uh, I think things that are going to change the way we live uh, in our world, uh, the way we address questions of healthcare, the way we do manufacturing. Uh, there's going to be some amazing stuff that you guys are going to see. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan Denemy. I'm the founder and CEO of McCoy Life Sciences, an early stage nanotechnology company developing disruptive products for the healthcare industry. Six million people in North America currently suffer from chronic heart failure. We've developed a product that addresses some of the major issues with this disease, which is that up to 50% of people diagnosed with heart failure will be re-hospitalized within six months of their initial diagnosis. Rehospitalization is extremely expensive and is responsible for 18 billion of the current $39 billion it costs to treat this disease each year in the US alone. This is a major problem. And the reason for this problem is that the current method of post-discharge diagnostic monitoring of heart failure patients is to track changes in daily average body weight. This is extremely inaccurate and ineffective and makes it very difficult to spot problems early enough on to prevent rehospitalization from occurring. The solution to this problem is to monitor a patient's BNP levels, a biomarker of heart failure, using the Nicoya Heart Dock. Much like a diabetic manages their disease through the use of glucose measurements, a heart failure patient can monitor their BNP levels and use this to adjust medications or make lifestyle modifications, which has been clinically proven to reduce rehospitalization by up to 60%. We've developed the first home use BMP diagnostic test. It takes a small finger prick droplet of blood and can determine the concentration of BMP in less than 15 minutes and for less than $5 per test. Our product can be used in the patient's own home. And through smartphone integration, uh, the results can be easily tracked and securely uploaded to the, to the, or sent to the physician for review. Our product, competitive advantage is our novel patent-pending optical sensing technology based on localized surface plasma resonance, or LSPR. LSPR is an optical phenomenon associated with metal nanoparticles and results in an optical resonance peak. This resonance peak shifts in position when a biomarker of interest, such as BMP in this case, binds to the surface of the nanoparticle via specific capture probes. Now, LSPR has been around for over 10 years. We've made significant improvements to this technology through the incorporation of nanoparticles into novel nanoporous sensing membranes, essentially creating a 3D architecture. This new architecture greatly improves device performance and allows us to measure biomarkers at clinically relevant concentrations at a cost, accuracy, and speed that competitors currently cannot match. This is a $2 billion market opportunity. We plan on entering this market by partnering with a larger established medical device firm and using their established distribution and sales channels. We've received seed funding and our current, from the University of Waterloo and the Canadian federal government and are currently building our first prototype. We have a team of experienced engineers with over 25 years of experience in sensor design. We've established an experienced advisory board with expertise in healthcare, technology, and business. Together, we're going to commercialize this innovation and change the world of healthcare forever. Thank you. What is BNP and do you have any clinical evidence that it can predict chronic heart failure? Yeah. So BNP stands for brain natriuretic peptide. It's a peptide that circulates in the blood and it's a marker of uh, elevated fluid retention, which is the main reason for rehospitalization among heart failure patients. Um, and there have been clinical studies done showing that there's a 60% decrease in rehospitalization uh, when uh, BNP is used to titrate medication versus the standard care, which is just using daily average body weight. So, someone has to drop their own blood for this asset? Yeah, it's a finger prick drop of blood. And um, what do you do about fouling to do other components of the blood? Um, so, we have a couple of things we do. We block the entire sensor, any, any open area on the sensor, with blocking molecules like BSA or other smaller chain vial uh, molecules, basically. Um, and then we also have um, a control test that happens at the exact same time. So if something fouls, we'll see it in the control test. Presumably this could be used with, to detect other molecules. Yeah. Well. yeah. How do you choose this as your, your first attack? Right, yeah. So it's definitely a platform technology. It can be used to pretty much measure anything. Um, we chose this because it's a huge problem right now that we identified. Um, and we've had some clinical partners who we've been discussing with in terms of which applications to focus on. Um, and this is one that has come up uh, multiple times. All right, a patient isn't going to change their doses of medicine. So how is the information getting to their doctors in a relevant time frame? And are the doctors willing to look at that information in that kind of frequent time frame? Right, right. 
Right, so the, the test would be done pretty much daily, but the physician wouldn't review the test daily, obviously. They would review it maybe every two to three weeks. Um, but the reason you need that frequent, uh, those frequent data samples is because just by physiological variation, you're going to get a lot of changes in the level of BNP. So you need enough points to give you a, a solid average over time. And so once you can get that average over time, the physician can review it every two or three weeks. And if the levels are continuing to go up, then the, the physician will intervene and say you should up your dose of diuretic medication or we should switch you to this, this different brand of medication because this one's not working for you. So they wouldn't be reviewing it every day, but it would be every two to three weeks. But um, right now they pretty much visit the hospital every three to four weeks um, because of complications because they can't manage the disease properly anyway. Uh, so you're measuring the surface plasma resonance shift essentially. Yep. You look at, you're using a spectrometer to do so. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at what the cost for the entire unit would be, what your cost was, was, and if so, if you explore the razor versus razor blade financial model? Yeah, that's the exact model we're, we're going with. So the, the unit itself right now, components-wise, is about $1,500 for everything. Um, but once we start buying bulk, we'll get that below 1000 for sure. Um, but then we'll basically just give it away or lease it to the patient and then make most of our revenue um, just by the immediate sale of the test cartridges, which are much higher margins. Could you comment on how uh, easy or hard it is to manufacture the actual chip that gives you the 3D structure? That yeah. You um, so we have a supplier who we um, buy the parts from and then we do a bunch of kind of proprietary steps in order to actually produce the uh, sensing substrate that we use. And it's pretty easy. We can we can do it in about two or three hours um, to prepare the, the substrates. The I cost is fairly low per per substrate. Dave, your question answered. Great. Let's make that the last one. Thanks very much, Ryan. Our second place goes to Ryan Denon, compact low cost.